Hey kids, today we're working with a Hyundai HY2000 SI Series Power Inverter. This has a four-stroke motor and it is quiet. What a nice little rig. I'm very pleased with it. I bought it for a song and a dance. I literally was singing and dancing after I bought it because they got it so cheap. The owner had it from the beginning. He's the original one owner and uh, she wouldn't start for him. Pull and pull and pull and wouldn't start. So he gave up. So I bought it really cheap. I brought it home and the first thing I did was check the oil. These have a low window, a small parameter what they accept to run at. And it's like within a quarter of an inch off the full line. If you're above the full line, it's not going to run. And if you're below it, a quarter of an inch, or maybe it's even less, it's not going to run. So I topped it off at the full line, started up on the first pull. Started right up. So that should be duly noted. If you can't start it, check your oil. Don't, don't take that oil sensor off something like this. Those older generators uh, you can get away with it but this this baby here I would leave it intact I wouldn't I'm not going to take it off because it can save you it'll save that motor some wear and tear you don't want to run them low okay let's get to the problem of it let's show you the circuit board here here we go so this is your CDI it tells you if you are overloaded or if you're low on oil or it will tell you, give you a green light in the center to tell you that this circuit here is ready to produce electricity that you can power up your tool with it. And this one doesn't light up. Anything on there doesn't light up. So um, knowing that, I check my voltage here on my DC current. This is a jump start, if you will. You charge your car battery with it. It's a 12 volt um, um, current that comes off here. I checked that and I'm getting strong 15 steady volts right off this. It is a direct current charge and it's staying strong right at 15 volts. So that's good. We're producing some electricity. But this one here is producing this regular outlet should be at 120 and I'm getting 1.2, 1.3 volts. That's very bad. You can't run anything off that. So I check my breaker, that's good. I unplug everything off this unit and I take the power from the inverter itself while it's running and I'm still getting weak volts. My guess, it's an inverter. But all the research shows it's this CDI. So I'm going to try to change it. Maybe it's the CDI. I doubt it. I'll be so impressed and so happy because this only costs 60 bucks. The inverter, which I think it is, is like $275. So, yep, let's hope it's that. So, anyhow, that's the symptoms. Let's get to it. Let's show you how to change the CDI on it. There are four screws that we are going to extract. First, let's take the four outside screws. Nothing on the inside control panel. Just the whole panel itself. We're going to take it right out. And these screws are uh, not high quality screws. So they don't like to really stick to my magnet tips at all. So you're going to be cautious as you oh, see. you got to be cautious as you, um, as you do this. Uh, even put them in the magnet bowl. Here we go. Last one. Put that drop right in there. Okay. So now we just lay this down. All these wires are delicate wires. You don't want to pull. And on a side note, these grommets, nuts if you will, are very loose in place. So if you hit it, jar they're going to fall and they will fall right down underneath everything and you'll have to fish them out with your magnet 
So try to keep them in place and be delicate in all your movements with it as you take it apart. So this is the CDI that we're going to change. I don't know if you can see that. Very good. Let's, uh, let's camera down this white unit right here. We're going to take that out. It's held in by two screws. The face plate is this um, right here. So that's your face plate. You're going to put your hand on that because you're going to have to capture that. You don't want it to fall on the ground and have to bend over. I don't like bending over. It's like one of my least favorite things to do. As you get older, you'll know what I'm saying. It's a true story. Probably should bend over more than what I do, and I don't want to be so sore getting up. You know, you got to make that noise. So this is why you use a magnet tip screwdriver, because you can take out the good quality screws easy enough and not have to fish for them. Nice, so now I take my face plate and I put that also in the safe spot. So now we got to unplug these delicate wires. And, and they really are delicate. They're light wires. So we don't want to break them. We don't want to compromise them. So I use a nice pair of needle, thin needle nose pliers to do this type of surgery here. And I do feel like a surgeon as I do it. See, we got a generator down in the garage. So here we go, this last one. So these are always encapsulated with um, silicone. And sometimes you have to pick away at the silicone to get it to come up, like I'm doing right now. Don't be afraid, but don't yarn and pull and poke and break your wires, because then you got to do more surgery that's not really necessary. So... What you want to do is cut it gingerly with a sharp implement, a nice razor. So here is your CDI unit. So I just unplug these three harnesses, okay? And now I'm going to set this unit down and get my new one. i got to go get it. Here's the new one. Same exact thing, luckily. Okay, and there's no standard procedure to plug these in, but you just want to use your head like, hey, which one should I do last because the other ones won't, will be in the way, you know, you got to figure that out, that's all. I'm not going to tell you to do the medium and large and then small one, but that's what I did. So now, I plugged them in until they snapped. But I'm going to press a little harder with my with my pliers just to make sure we got full contact. Okay, we got that done. So now we're going to put together the CDI as it came apart. Take your face plate, put that in place first. As you can see. Now we take that CDI and set it on top as it was when you took it apart. Use a screwdriver, not a power driver, because this is screw is screwing directly into plastic. And you don't want to over torque it. You don't want to spin it because um, the plastic will definitely just strip out. So, here we go. Second screw. Just using a normal Phillips head screwdriver. I say normal. Mine are all magnetized tips. Just, I, I think they should outlaw the other ones. They just don't make sense to me. It's just my own thing. So now, like I said before, make sure your nuts, if you will, are in place. And now we're going to tuck these wires in as you bring the board closer. So it's just easy that way, all right? We're going to get one started right here. Doesn't matter. There's no technical way to do it. But I like to do opposites. 
So I'm doing a corner. Okay, that one's in. So before we get a screw in hand, make sure you can line up without having to force anything. There's no forcing. Don't force anything. Everything, just take your time. There's no race. No fire to put out, I hope. I hope nobody's catching the garage on fire. Safety always is first. Here's the last one. Here we go. So now I'm going to pick all my stuff up because we got to test it. We're going to run a test light on here so you can see what we come up with. And hopefully it works. But if it doesn't, we'll know it's the inverter. Okay. So you have your multi-reader. So when I'm doing this, it even tells you that it's a DC current, that it's direct current. I'm going to put it on 20 to check this, because it won't go any higher than 20. It should be around 12 to 15, hopefully always elevated more than 12. And when I check this one, make sure your breaker is on. This one's already in for this. And, well, I turn it off when I start it, and then I turn it on when I run it. I should be reading 120 or more on that. Okay, so to make sure this unit is running, you have your gas on. Push your primer ball a few times. Put the choke on right here. Walk to this side, and we'll start it. Make sure you're on the line. That's why I like it. Start so easy. started. Okay, a little more current. It went up to two. So sometimes, sometimes you can just run a machine and all of a sudden they'll start producing electricity. And I might do that with this, but in the long run, I, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be doing another video and showing you how to change the, the inverter itself. So you That'll be a whole different video. So hopefully I helped you on this. This is how you change that CDI and the oil um, check. So anyhow, um, so hopefully you guys have learned something about your Hyundai generator today. And um, if you have any constructive criticism, please help yourself. Let me know. If I'm doing something wrong, I like to learn things new too every day. Um, I appreciate your participation. You can like it. You can subscribe it. I appreciate your participation. Be safe.